Hello, you guys. Tonight is March 1st, 2016. I feel like I say this all the time, but seriously, where does the time go? I feel like I was just telling people Happy New Year all but just a couple weeks ago. Uh, tonight, I am doing a sort of by request podcast. If any of you follow me on Snapchat, I snapped that I would be doing a podcast. And so I told people to send me questions to my Ask FM. For those of you who don't know what my Ask FM is, it is ask.fm backslash my leak teal. And if you just do a quick Google search, if you are unclear on how to spell my name, Google will let you know. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping. You know how that goes. I will tell you in the event that I stop and pause just a couple times, I've got some water. I just was eating like a snack of almonds, cranberries, and pumpkin seeds because I'm starving, but I want to do this before I like settle in for dinner. I just get worried that if I make my dinner and sit down and have a glass of wine that I will not do this. So if you'll just bear with me, you know, if I stop for a second, you totally get it. Uh, I just want to also take a moment to thank you for rating this podcast on iTunes. I saw that iTunes uh, recommended my podcast for Black History Month, so that was exciting. And I saw that we've been getting up the charts on business every so often. And so every time you tell your friends, every time you share it, every time you uh, rate it and like it in iTunes, you just... uh, Prove that the things that we talk about are important um, and that our message matters. Uh, and I also, you probably notice if you listen to other podcasts, it's like there are ads throughout the podcast. There are no ads here uh, because I do this when I want, how I want for you. So thank you. Thank you for always uh, rolling with your girl. Uh a few more months left in stock. The store is mytachi.com. I did put my very first journal up in the store. So for those of you who were curious about my journaling method, the learn more to earn more journal, that is the one that is not black, um, is in the store. And for those of you that want to make this year your year, the this is my year journals are still in stock. And you can decide at any time during the year that you want to make this year about you. Sometimes I do it Um, On my birthday, I take inventory, but no matter where you are in the year, feel free to uh, go ahead and grab that journal and um, get started. So without further ado, that's all done. I'm going to get into these questions. They are very diverse. So I do recommend that you hang with me. I'm not sure how people listen and I have no way of checking like when people click off of these or how you fast forward, but um, they're all very diverse. And so this is one that I definitely recommend you stay tuned in for. So first question. Hi, my leak. How much TV do you watch during the week and weekend? And if you watch, what do you watch? Also, can you share a list of your favorite Snapchat accounts? Who do you follow? And that was from Sharice. Hey, Sharice. Give me a second. Let me take a quick swig. Okay, so I do not watch much TV. Um, I have one TV in my house, and I will probably get one or two more. But for the most part, I don't watch television. Um, I don't believe in having a TV in the bedroom uh, because I think the bed is for sleeping and maybe some other things. Um, But I don't watch TV at all, really. I would say that I probably watch about maybe 10 to 15 hours of TV per year uh, tops. You know, I don't really watch it much. If I am watching TV... I love all things Oprah. So now that Oprah doesn't have like a serious show on, I don't really watch. I know that she has the network and the super soul Sundays and all those bits, but, um, I just haven't had the time to set my DVR to record those shows. So I haven't seen them. And the things that I do catch, I tend to catch like what matters online. So I'm sure a lot of people are doing that these days. Um, Right now, I will tell you that I will catch a show if it's like super huge in pop culture. Sadly, not Scandal, because I know Scandal is super huge and there's some other shows that I'm missing out on. But the OJ series, like OJ versus the people, I heard so much about that. And so I tuned in to watch my first episode, I think like last week with my boo. And I actually really enjoyed it. So I think we watched a second one last night. And so my plan is to try to finish that. But I also started a new book two nights ago. So we've agreed to do a little bit of reading and then maybe just watch that show. But besides that, I don't really watch much TV. 
As far as Snapchat goes, um, I my Snapchat follow, followers are typically people that I follow are like people that I know. So like my friends, um, as far as people that I wouldn't consider like hardcore friends, but that I do really like and enjoy. I love Mia Ray. Um, Kim Zolciak from Real Housewives of Atlanta. I know her. I love watching her. Uh, Evelyn from the internet. She's on there. I love, she's just funny all the way around. I love Karen Civil. I like Maddie of Maddie Allergy. I love Skinny Taste. Uh, Fitman Cook, he's on there. So I like a lot of cooking. If you follow me on Snapchat, you know that I like to do a lot of cooking. And so I tend to love the cooking snaps, uh, watching other people cook. And then I do love Elaine Welteroth of she's the beauty editor or editor at large or however she is at a uh, teen vogue she's hilarious her snap game is strong so i do love watching her next question hello my week hello so one of my bffs is turning 30 and a few of us are creating a 30 year old survivor's kit i just want to say before i continue that is so amazing it is so thoughtful and this is so cool of you um what books do you think I should get for a newly 30-year-old woman? Thank you for everything. Thank you for listening, and thanks for writing me, Mina. Uh, so I thought about it, and I was just like, okay, I'm 30. I'll be 37 in just a couple months. And I was like, if I were turning 30, what books would I want? And like, what have I read that I think you'd be into? One of my favorites that I bought just as I was turning 30 was 30 Lessons for Living, tried and true advice from the wisest Americans. And that's by, I think I have Cal Pelimer. I don't even know that I have that right because that doesn't even look right. But I'll say it again if you're writing this down. 30 lessons for living, tried and true advice from the wisest Americans. I really love that. It's a whole bunch of short stories from 30 different people. And I think that's how I discovered like Tim Ferriss of the four hour work week. There's just so many good people in there. So I do recommend you getting that. And it's, it's a really sort of easy read. Like she doesn't have to commit. It's just 30 short stories from some really amazing people. Another thing that I would recommend you and your girlfriends get her, which is not very expensive, probably no more than 15 or so dollars is a money magazine subscription. I really, really, really love money magazine. Lots of really amazing tips in there. So one of you can get her a Money Magazine subscription or any kind of cool magazine subscription that you think she can learn from based on her interest. Uh, one of my favorite books of the last like two years has been Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. It is a fiction book, but it is that book that you can just like dive into, get lost in. It's the book that you're going to find yourself staying up all night long to finish. And I think that like as you turn 30 and you may feel all this stress to like succeed or feel like you need to be somewhere, this is a book that just reminds you to like live life to the fullest um, and not take everything so seriously, you know, to take your joy seriously, to take your fun seriously. So I have literally bought me before you for like every person I know. It's just a wonderful book. Another book that I have been recommending to people as they sort of transition in their life is Tiny Beautiful Things, Advice on Love and Life by Cheryl Strait. I love all things Cheryl Strait. Cheryl is amazing. And she gives some very blunt and matter of fact advice that I think a lot of us need. And, you know, by the time you turn 30, it's time for you to stop playing games. You know, you get a little break in your 20s. Uh, I always say you have up until about like 33, I think, to kind of like keep stumbling around and trying to figure it out. And if you're past 33 and still stumbling around, don't beat yourself up like you are not alone. But Cheryl really gets you together like she gets you together in a real mf and way like that's how she is she kind of uses some curse words every now and then where they need to be used but I bought this I bought tiny beautiful things at an airport uh just randomly on my way to I think New York and I literally was like highlighting writing all on the side because it's just that good of a book and kudos to you guys tell your girlfriend happy birthday happy birthday girl you got some good friends looking out for you Next question. I broke up with my boyfriend a few months ago and I'm finding it hard to completely have him out of my life. His ex slash maybe new girlfriend seems to be finding me on social networks and it feels uncomfortable. It's a slap in the face. It still hurts and I need to find a way to rid him from my life. So I read this maybe let's just say one, two, three sentence sort of question. And I highlighted some things and then I put some things in parentheses. And so I kind of want to just talk, talk you through this. The first thing you said was I broke up with my boyfriend. So that lets me know that you broke up with him for whatever reason. 
I'm I'm going to assume that you broke up with him because you didn't feel like it was working out. I don't know all of the particulars, but you didn't get broken up with. You broke up with him. So you made the conscious choice to do this. Then you follow up and tell me that you are finding it hard to have him out of your life. And I'm like, okay, that I can understand that. And then when you started to go to the third sentence and started to talk about his ex slash maybe new girlfriend, I was like, he's not in your life. He's, you broke up with him and you didn't, the next sentence didn't say that he was doing anything to keep up with you. So he's not, from what you're telling me, he's out of your life. And this person that you're saying is his ex slash maybe new girlfriend, I feel like that's not your business. It's not your business because you broke up with him and what somebody does with whoever after they break up isn't your business. But then I feel like you've taken it a step further to speculate whether or not this may be his new girlfriend. And it's just like, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't, it's not even worth, neither of them are even worth trying to figure out who or what she is. So I want to know, why is it a slap in the face? You ended a relationship and people can do as they please after relationships are done. I'm not trying to beat you up, but I do want to try to just give you the very core facts. If I were there, I would give you a little hug because I know that this stuff is tough. I've been through breakups. It never feels good, but I feel like you contacted me because you wanted me to give you the real and I'm going to give you the real because I owe you the real. So if you broke up, uh, He's done. He's not contacting you. He's completely out of your life. And whatever this ex-girl or potential new girlfriend, if you feel like you want to block her, go ahead and do that. If you want to keep yourself from uh, viewing her page, you need to not do that. You need to not keep up with your ex because I really don't. That's the thing that I hate about social media is like back in the day when I was like super young, you broke up with people, you deleted their number and you never heard from them again. Like now you can Google somebody, find their work email. It's just a mess. But I say you need to move on and stop worrying about what you think is going on. You right. You might be right. Cause typically what we think tends to be right, but why do you care? And stay off everybody's pages and you need to move on because it's clear that he already has according to you. So I say that you move on focus on yourself, um, focus on whatever it is that you need to do, go discover your hobbies, go get a massage, go breathe. But whatever you do, you need to stop worrying about who may or may not be following you and who they may or may not be to him. Good luck. Next question. Hello, my league. I will be 25 in a few months and feeling like I should have everything in my life figured out. I think that's every 25 year old's like issue. Number one, feelings are not facts. So just know that what you feel is not true and that will pass if you allow it to. And at 25, you should not have it all together. I walked away from a company I loved but was miserable due to poor management. It scares the hell out of me to not have something else lined up. Any suggestions on how to get on track? Uh, what I love most about you is that you've already moved on. You left somewhere that you didn't want to be. And that's typically the hardest thing for many people to do. So kudos to you. Shout out to you. Round of applause. I'm trying to put my water bottle down for moving on. So that part's already done. I say that you go do some research and find another company that you absolutely love. I love the fact that you loved your job, but you were smart enough to recognize that it wasn't being managed correctly. And thus, it was just not for you and a waste of your time. So you left. So that's amazing. Like that requires the kind of courage that most people don't have. A couple books that I want to suggest that you take a look at. Check out The Defining Decade by Meg J. Check out Nice Girls Don't Get the Corner Office. And also check out one of my favorite, favorite books is Zen and the Art of Making a Living. That's going to help you figure out your sort of next career steps that you may want to take. So I'll read those again for those of you who are writing them down and don't want to rewind. The Defining Decade by Meg J. Nice Girls Don't Get the Corner Office. I don't have the author, but there's only one of those kind of books. And Zen and the Art of Making a Living. Next up. 
Hi, my league. Hey, girl. One of the things I most admire is your directness. When it comes to business communication, especially with newer contacts, how do you manage your tone in email and text convos? There is a fine line between direct and cold, and I want to be more aware of it and still avoid the fluff. So uh, first thing that I saw is that you're talking about business communication and you're talking about newer contacts. Business and new equals phone calls. You should not be emailing and texting new people. So you FaceTime is like the first thing that I always recommend. If you can get in front of these people's face, the newer contacts, when I, when someone's new, I like to meet them. If you can, I suggest meeting that person first. Once a person gets a chance to meet you and understand you and check for your body language, check for your tone, see how you speak, see what kind of words you use. It will be very difficult for them to misunderstand you, which it is very easy to do in an email or a text conversation. So first I say you need to sit down with the person. If you can't sit down with the person, another thing that I want to recommend you do is pick up the phone. Phone also makes it easier for people to understand the tone in which you speak. They may understand that you go quickly. You can let them know, I'm going to shoot you a quick email in the morning. I'm going to follow up with you, uh, in one week. So if you're follow, if you've already spoken to them and you send an email in a week and all the email says like checking in, if you don't, if you aren't familiar with this person, if this person isn't familiar with your communication style, that seems very tacky. But once you've kind of established a rapport over the phone, then you want to, um, then it's easier for you to be even more direct in, in email and text communication. So another thing I want to recommend that you do is just always be nice. Even in email, I am very direct, but one thing that I, I tend to be, unless I'm super hot and it doesn't matter. I'm always overly nice in my email. Um, Even if I'm not overly nice, uh, even if I'm not feeling overly happy or overly cheery or chippy, it's easy to be in a good mood in email. So I usually kick off most of my emails with, hey, so-and-so, hope you had a wonderful weekend. Um, That's just, that way you sort of, you get these people softened up for whatever it is that you have to say. And I always like to close with something, you know, awesome as well. I say that you compliment people. If you've seen that someone did really well, hey, Lily, I saw that you just won a so-and-so award. Kudos to you. That was amazing. If you saw something that they did, kudos on your recent launch. That was incredible. Um, Go ahead and always just be overly nice all the time in email because then you can be even more direct when people know that you're not just an a-hole. Um, also, people who are also about their business appreciate other people who are about their business. So somebody else who was about their business is not worried about the fact that you did not send a 12-page letter asking for one thing. So I hope that that really helps, giving you just one or two more steps uh, before you start doing email and text messaging. Next question is, what is the best way to achieve long-term success? And so I saw this last night and I thought about it like, good, good question. How can I answer this? Because it seems like such a difficult question to answer and there are so many answers. But as I sat with this question, something hit me. The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. If you have not read The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Go ahead and get that. I know there are a lot of books for you to get tonight, but go ahead and put this on the top of your list and highlight it if you haven't read it. But I think the best way to achieve long-term success is number one, to be impeccable with your word. That is the first agreement. You have to do what you say you're going to do. And if you don't do what you say you're going to do, you need to let people know right away and have some level of accountability about the fact that you are unable to do it. Um, Second thing you want to do is it says, don't take anything personally. I know that that's very difficult to do, but a lot of times I was just talking to my therapist tonight about how, let's just say you wanted to, you want to go to somebody's house and they like say no, or they don't let you in. And you think it's about you. And it could be that maybe they don't have their carpets completed, or maybe they don't have any furniture. Maybe they're embarrassed. Like everything is not about you. And if you can just remove yourself and not try to take things personally, I think you can succeed long-term. 
Next thing is don't make assumptions. I think so many people do that. I hate when people do that to me. I'm like, do not assume, ask the question. Um, because your assumptions are based on your history and your history may not always be congruent with someone else, someone else's. So you could be putting your past SHIT on somebody else when that person didn't go through what you went through. And so they're not, they're not coming from the same space. And so do not assume. And the final one is always do your best. I think that you should always do your best at every single thing you do. When you always do your best and someone doesn't like it, you have this thing where you just don't even really feel bad about it because you're just like, you know what? I did my best. If my best is not good enough, then this just isn't for me. So that is my suggestion on achieving long-term success. Next question. How does being an entrepreneur affect your relationships with your friends and family? Good question. I'm so serious. When I tell you that my mouth is just like so dry and will not stop watering, I think because I'm so daggone hungry. Um, so one more swig of water. Thank you guys. Okay. Um, being an entre entrepreneur has had a huge uh, effect and impact on my relationships with my friends and family. I used to do a lot of entertaining at my house on the weekends. I love having people over. Um, I'm more of a person that likes to get one-on-one -on -one with people. I love to sit down and see your face and talk to you and feel like, see how you're doing, see your eyes when you're talking to me and being once I became a very, I would just say successful entrepreneur because I was an entrepreneur before and I had more time. But once my business sort of succeeded, I think we grew 1900% our first year, I literally had like no time, you know, and the little bit of free time that I had, I would want to use it to like recharge and go to the beach. And sometimes I try to include my friends, um, but a lot of my relationships suffered, you know, and I don't want to blame entrepreneurship, but uh, I just wasn't able to keep as many balls in the air because of it. And so there's that thing where they say you can have it all, but not all at once. When you're thriving in one area, you are likely sucking in another. And so I didn't have as much time. I traveled a ton. Um, you know, you try to start to squeeze in a lot uh, over short periods of time, which makes you even more tired. And um, I do think that there has been some benefits. You know, I have been able to take friends on vacations with me and pay for it. I have been able to fly my parents out and have them stay for the week at my house and kind of like let them chill and hang out while I'm doing some work so that we can blend the two together. Um, I think that, you know, I'm able to help in a much larger capacity. A lot of my friends, you know, if somebody needs something, I have more resources to help, which I think everybody appreciates to some degree. So um, I think it works. Uh, next up, in the dating realm, how do you detect if the guy has a mentality of why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? As in not having him get too comfortable in that stage to never consider something more serious for those wanting marriage, etc. cetera. Um, I wrote... You don't have to play games with someone that's serious about being with you. I do believe that men like slash need slash want a challenge, meaning they tend to be more attracted to you when you are chasing your dreams or your thing. Um, I didn't make this up. There's a study on why men are into like sports and competition and there's a book. I tend to forget it, but there is this thing that says that men are supremely into like the chase slash challenge. Um, this is not me saying this. This is what someone else says. And based on my observation, I would have to say that I agree. I think that it's up to you to be open and be honest about what it is that you're looking for when you start dating someone, what you're looking for in a relationship and say, you know, even, you know, so many women are afraid to say this, but it's just like, if you are looking for a long-term relationship that eventually that leads to marriage, it is okay for you to say that. And the person that's for you will either be about that or not. And if they're not about that, then you move on. It's not personal. I would not spend any time trying to convince uh, 
I would not spend any time trying to convince him to be something that you're not looking for. You have to go out there and find what you're looking for. So when you say, this is what I'm looking for, when you take ownership of what it is you're looking for and what you want, and the person that you're dating doesn't seem to be on the same page, either they don't say it or their actions say something different, you leave, you know, and you move on. Way too many fish in the sea to get hung up on somebody that, is not aligned with your goals. So keep it pushing. Um, hi, my leak. Love your podcast. Thank you. Don't stop. You're definitely not loud. And I LOL to that because there was someone who wrote me who was just like, you talk too loud. Lately, you've been talking too loud. And I'm just like, okay, I get excited about things. Sometimes when I get excited, just turn the volume down. It's all good, girl. Um, but this was a funny question. Have you ever dealt with a friend that turned into a bridezilla? If so, how did you deal? If not, recommendations. So I will not comment on that but I will say that the best thing you can do is just try to understand where they're coming from a lot of bridezillas have dreamt of this day their whole lives and they have it all figured out and what they're deciding to do and if something ever gets to a point that's uncomfortable to you like I've had situations where I've had brides being like I want you to do this and I want you to do that and I'm just like that's not me that does not make me comfortable and if this is an issue then I don't have to be a part of this like I want you to have the kind of day that you want to have and if I if my not complying with what exactly you want from me uh doesn't work then I want you to have your day like as your friend I want you to have your day um and if I'm not aligned with that then I will gladly be a guest because I'm happy for you either way you know and so that's really how you handle that and I think that helps people put things into perspective um and that's how, that's that. Next up, how do you get things done? I have so many things I want to accomplish in a day and my procrastination levels are so high that I eventually just crash and accomplish nothing. Do you have any tips on staying productive and effective time management outside of journaling and scheduling? So I said, I get things done because I don't want to be broke. I don't want to suck and I matter. When I slack off and don't do things, I'm screaming to other people, I do not care about myself. And I wonder why they don't. So the first thing is to just get to the heart of it all. When you don't care about you, don't expect other people to care about you. So the way that you show that you care about you is by handling your business. You know, that's the first thing that you can do is for you to handle your business. Like, you know that you have things to do. You are an adult. Nobody should have to stand over you. Like that, like I'm not even going to recommend any apps. I don't have any verses. I don't have any quotes. It's just like, get it together because what you're doing is communicate. You're communicating something. What do they call it? Um, nonverbal communication. You're communicating something to people that I'm pretty sure you don't want people to think and feel about you. So that's what you need to think about. How do I want people to feel about me as a woman? And it's just like, you do you want to be an ain't person or do you want to be known as a person who handles her business? Handle your business. Stop playing. Like, stop playing out here and take yourself seriously because nobody else is. It's like, you have to be the person that teaches people how to treat you. And if you don't treat you well, no one else is going to treat you well. So that's it. That's what you need to do. That's how I get stuff done. Sorry, girl. I don't mean to be like that, but I'm just saying we got to do better. Uh, I think this might be my last question. Uh, I have a couple more, but I'll save them for another time. Uh, last question. I grew up with a mother who suffered from depression, which caused her to complain and be negative a lot. I now see that complaining spirit in myself, even when I don't intend to be any advice. Firstly, I would just hug you and tell you that I feel very terrible because I do understand like the genetics, like, uh, a, a lot of times our depression could be genetic. You may also be depressed. And so I, I recommend that you go see a professional as soon as you possibly can. Um, I love that you have the awareness that you recognize that you recognize where something is coming from. You recognize something that you're doing and you recognize that you need to work on it. So now that you've done all of the very hard work, the easy part is just going to have someone to help you with that. Um, being negative is never cool. I don't, to give you a very non-professional suggestion, I always like to start my day with a simple prayer. Thank you. And a positive affirmation. 
anything that you can read. There's plenty of books of quotes at the um, at the bookstore. I like to just read a, a really positive quote, but more than anything, I do recommend that you get some help because I used to have some very um, severe anger issues. Like I used to just be a very angry person and I don't even think I realized how angry I was. I don't even know where the anger sort of came from. I just wasn't just, I felt like quote unquote naturally angry and it wouldn't be that I would like physically harm people, but verbally and just kind of like nasty attitude kind of way. I was just very sort of, I I would get angry about things that I don't think I should have been as angry about. And so I was able to get some help with that, uh, with a professional and I'm almost four years into my therapy and I cannot tell you about the level of like peace that I have in my life. And so I recommend you doing that. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Have a good day, night, wherever you are. Um, please don't stop writing me, snapping me, Instagramming me. I always love hearing what you have to say. Have a good day. Bye.